Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. So welcome to part two of our M4 episode where today we'll be exploring the M4 as it winds its way through South Wales. The M4 in its entirety is about 189 miles long, but the Wales stretch accounts for only 73 miles of that. Our journey today starts at the Prince of Wales Bridge, where we'll be following the M4 across the River Severn and passing Wales' major cities such as Newport, Swansea and Cardiff. I can't wait. After that, the motorway comes to an end at Pont Abraham, just north of Swansea, not really sure where, but let's go find out. As I said, we're starting at the Prince of Wales Bridge, and if you've crossed that and are driving into Wales, just before you come up to Junction 23, you might spot a secret junction. Whilst I'm sure it is used by the emergency services and authorised vehicles, it wasn't intended for this use, and is actually the leftovers of the site where the toll booths would have been that collected the monies before or after you crossed the bridge. They scrapped the toll charges when the bridge was handed over to public ownership, and in December 2018, the toll booths were removed. However, the the original operations room or offices building is still in place today. Between junctions 23A and 24, we find a set of ghost slip roads. It used to be a full set designed for services that never happened. However, following the M4 widening, two of the slip roads have been eaten up by the motorway and the two remaining slip roads are certainly in suboptimal condition, having been left abandoned for so long. Service stations are done a little bit differently in Wales, where the operating companies themselves would put forward plans and ideas as to where they should build them. But in the case of our slip roads here at Wilcrick, the Welsh office had actually planned for there to be a service station here, but none of the operating companies came forward to build it. At junction 32, we find the Corrington Roundabout possibly the largest roundabout in the UK. And what's interesting here is that on the west side of the junction, the A470 crosses over the roundabout's carriageway, yet on the east side, it crosses underneath the carriageway. There's only one other example to be found of this on the motorways, which we've explored in a previous video. Since a trip to Wales is quite a big day out for me, one of the production teams very kindly provided me with a CD to listen to whilst we drive around. Do you remember those CDs? I'll get it now. Thanks. Exiting at Junction 37 takes us into South Cornelly, a small village that's probably more quarry than it is village, with the massive Cornelly quarry dominating the landscape. Digging shit up here started way back in the 17th century and they haven't really stopped since. Today the quarry is operated by Tarmac and is the largest limestone quarry in South Wales. It's always been an important site as it supplies the nearby Port Talbot steelworks with the ground limestone or sinter that's required during the steel making process. Alongside the quarry are a couple of lakes that have obviously been left over after excavation works. They're remarkably blue in colour and locally these have been dubbed blue lagoons. The reason they're so blue is because of the dissolved limestone in the water. It reflects certain parts of the sunlight and that gives us this wonderful blue colour. I'm just hoping they are blue. Were they blue? They're probably not blue. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Just before we reach junction 38, the M4 crosses over a bridge which gives us a lovely view of the Port Talbot steelworks. If you look to your left, you'll notice a rather unassuming patch of land that looks rather desolate. It's hard to believe that once upon a time, this would have been a busy and bustling area with freight and trains moving all around. For you see, there used to be a myriad of railways in the area, crisscrossing their way to the various mines, quarries, works, and of course, on their way to the steelworks. Today, there's quite a lot to see with a few bridges still left on site, an awful lot of track, and there's even a few wagons still sat in their marshalling yards, having been disconnected from the main line. A short distance up the railway, you'll find the Margo Knuckle Yard, which is operated by D.B. Schenker, who of course look after the freight operations for the area. That marshalling yard has obviously replaced whatever used to be here. I need to bring to your attention Junction 41, perhaps one of the more bizarre junctions to be found on the M4 with its elongated slip roads. It's a long story, but in short, before the M4 came along, the A48 Brackets M was Wales' main motorway. It followed a different route to the M4 that we know today, and when the M4 was constructed, they used bits of the A48 M to build these slip roads. So I guess these slip roads are just repurposed bits of the old A48M. And what makes it a little more interesting is that for a short while, you've got two sections of the M4 motorway running parallel to one another. 
And if you're heading west like we are, to exit the motorway, you do a left as usual, and then it'll take you over the motorway on a short bridge and then link you up to the aforementioned slip road. A short distance up from there as we approach junction 42 is where you'll cross the Britain Ferry Bridge. And if you look out to your right, you'll notice another bridge running alongside. The one to your right was the first bridge to be installed here in the early 1950s, and in fact was one of the first large-scale bridge building projects following the small disagreement of 1939 to 1945. The second bridge, which you can see to the top of the shot just here, carries the M4 as we know it today, and that was built in 1993. Also, behind me, you'll notice a rather lovely abandoned building. It wasn't part of the script, I've no idea what it is, I just happened to stumble across it pretty decent. Remember the A48 Brackets M that I mentioned a short while ago? Well, between junctions 43 and 44 lies a stretch of abandoned carriageway, which is a leftover piece of the A48M. This stretch of abandoned tarmac came about following the installation of the M4. The A48M used to come right through here on a slightly different route, where it would meet a roundabout on the other side of the railway. While some of the A48M has been reused, the bit where it joined up with the roundabout wasn't needed whilst building the M4, so it was all removed. The result is we've got this slither of A48M left to enjoy. Mmm, tarmac. Sticking with the abandoned theme, which I know is something I rarely do, as you drive between junctions 44 and 45, you'll pass under a bridge that's a fairly typical motorway concrete design. But when looking on Google Maps, something caught my eye on the top, and it was railway tracks. At the time of writing the script, I had no idea as to whether the tracks would still be here or not. I've now missioned through the bushes to get onto the bridge, as you can see, and yes, the tracks are still in place. So what's this railway all about? Well, it's a branch line that came off the main line built by GWR. From here, the railway would have headed north towards Clydark, and where today we find a housing estate, back in the 1930s, you'd have found several sidings that were built to serve a gravel pit. I must admit, details are a little bit hard to come by as to the exact use of the sidings. All I can find is a brief mention of gravel pits in the area. If you know any different, please do let me know. Oh shit, OB, OB, run! Keep an eye out between junctions 45 and 46 for the imposing DVLA building. Originally, vehicle registrations would have been taken care of via your local council. It wasn't until 1965 that a centralised system was introduced. A few years later, the DVLC, as it was known back then, opened their headquarters here at Swansea in 1969. It wasn't until 1990 that they became known as the DVLA, and despite being here all this time, nobody really knows what goes on inside the DVLA building. Rumours are that they're working on black hole technology that vaporises documents to another dimension, never to be seen again. That's what I heard, anyway. As we approach junction 40A, the M4 crosses over the river Lofor. Or Lofor? La it's Wales. I'm never going to get it right. But if you look to your left, you'll see something else crossing the river as well, the 11-arch Hendy Viaduct. It was built in the early 1900s and carries the same main line that we mentioned earlier between Neath and Ponta Dule. Railways aside, and the estuary of the river Lofor, or Lofor, whatever, was once upon a time used as a testing and calibration site for weapons during World War II. There were rumours that anthrax-based biological weapons were tested on sheep in the area. It turns out, in 1987, that was confirmed to be true. Or at least that's what the internet says. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the anthrax, sorry mate. Junction 49, the end of the M4. We've made it and done the entire thing. It's here you'll also find Pont Abraham Services, which is named after a bridge that no longer exists. It's here that our journey ends, except it doesn't. No, the plan was to drive up to the Brecon Beacons and film an absolutely epic awesome outro, as we like to do. But this is what it looked like. <laughs> Yeah, that's not really going to work, is it? So I've come back three days later in the hope of better weather simply to film this outro sequence. A service station's pretty crap for a video outro, I thought, so we've driven 15 miles up the road to Herbert's Quarry in the Brecon Beacons. Not only is the A4069 an absolute joy to drive down, there's a place called Mountain Road Viewpoint, which is pretty much as it suggests. And that's what Wales is all about, really, isn't it? Just take a look at this wonderful countryside. So there we are, guys. That's all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our double M4 episode. If you did, there's a button, of course, specifically for that. As some of you may know, I'm on a mission to reach 100,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That'd be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John. You've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Take care. See you then. Bye-bye.